Um, but one of the things that irritates us, one of the things that we get a bit ho ha about, one of the things that makes us question whether or not there's a functioning intelligence, and one of the things, when you look at Nanaya Mahuta's family contracts, and when you look at um, the habitual, well, the, 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 the proliferation of gang and gang membership in this country, when you look at the ram raids in Auckland, when you look at, um, I guess, the, the issues around law and order, but also around justice and prison populations and the like, one of the things that you do get a bit concerned about is that there are people being funded who should not be. And these police raids, uh, the last one yesterday, um, of a bail area, supposedly a rehabilitation centre, which people have bailed, um, and finding drugs, ammunition, um, and also uh, firearms, has excited, not unnaturally and not surprisingly, uh, Mark Mitchell, the National Party police spokesperson, and I think the Member of Parliament whose facility in which um, that, um, in which that um, is, uh, constituency is based. He joins us now. Mark, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, good morning, Michael. You're welcome. You're having the week off, aren't you? It's parliamentary non-sitting week. <laughs> well, as you know, a recess week is a, a break from Wellington, but it's certainly not a week off or... Um, uh, because you get to attend and do a whole lot of things back in your own patch um, that you don't otherwise get to do when you're in Wellington. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, you're the MP for what? What's your constituency? Fonda Prior. Right. So that's a relatively well-heeled area, is it? Uh, it's the Hibiscus Coast. It's sort of um, down to Derry Flat, Coatesville, um, Primarima, and um, sort of parts of Albany. Oh, okay. So you've got the prison in your constituency. Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, and you've also got this um, Na Kiti Wananga Solutions Rehabilitation Bail Facility in your neck of the woods Correct, too. That's, on, that's right. That's located on Postman's Road in Derry Flat. Before yesterday and the police raid, were you aware of it? Yes, I was aware of it. Um, I had information come from office in the last few months, uh, major concerns around what was happening there. Um, and I think that the warrant that the police executed yesterday as part of Operation Cobalt just reinforced the fact that this place is being used more like a gang pad uh, in terms of having, you know, firearms, cash, methamphetamine uh, on the site. And it's completely consistent with um, the other facility um, in Caracas Street, Eden Terrace, where the police executed a warrant and found high-powered military-style weapons actually in the common areas of that facility. Um, Mark, Mark. You there, there, Michael? Yeah, sorry. I'm assuming, yep. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. I'm assuming that uh, in some way, uh, shape or form, um, both the facilities that were raided yesterday by the police are funded by the New Zealand taxpayer. Have I got that right or wrong? So the first one is um, AHICA Trust is, uh, we're actually trying to establish that whether or not taxpayers' money is actually flowing through that, um, that facility. And the second one, it appears like there is definitely taxpayers' money going into it because the um, the residents are immediately told to apply for a uh, accommodation supplement, um, which means that, yes, there is definitely taxpayer. If that's true and that has been happening, then there is taxpayers' money flowing through that facility. Well, see, it's just that Narketi, which was the one, the, the earlier one, um, that's owned by uh, Matilda Kahutia, um, mm -hmm. that apparently, and I'm relying upon the New Zealand here also, I could well be wrong, but it's, it charges $19,000 for a 12-week program, including treatment for drug and alcohol addiction. And I'm thinking, hmm, your average criminal or just somebody released from prison doesn't have $19,000, do they? Well, I agree with you completely. And I think that this is why there needs to be a review um, from the government in terms of looking very closely at who is running, who is associated and involved with these facilities because um, it's a great way for gangs to be able to launder money um, through a facility like that and make it look legitimate, who has twenty thousand dollars cash sitting around to um, to enrol in, in in the in the program? Right. Um, so I think that so I think that needs to be looked at very closely. Yeah. No. Well, I'm sure you will, um, and and you'll do your job there. Good on you. Um, but yeah, how you. many others are there of these? I mean, that the thing that well, would immediately set yeah. me off now is, that, gosh, I have a suspicion that this must be nationwide. 
Well, you know, it's funny you should say that. I had some information come to me today that there's concerns around one down in the Bay of Plenty. Um, so uh, I, I think that there needs to be a much wider look now at um, who's approving these facilities, who's running them, who's associated with them. Um, and, you know, because I, I just think that it's a complete failure of our justice system when you have got gang members being bailed to locations in communities where effectively they're using those um, facilities as a gang pad to continue to run their criminal enterprise, have guns, uh, drugs and cash on the premise. And I know there's a fair bit of concern and anger in my own community here at how this could actually happen. Yeah, um, um, and again, it sort of runs with this whole idea that you don't ask questions, you just give out money. And um, I heard you being interviewed, for example, on Radio New Zealand this morning, and they took a slightly uh, aggressive line with you about saying, well, you know, you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Um, these people yep. are difficult people. But at the end of the day, um, as you say, if they are simply being used as a cover for gang activity, then there's not much rehabilitation going on them, is there? No, and by the way, there's completely legitimate organisations that, that, that um, provide outstanding services around rehabilitation and, and bail, uh, whilst being on bail. But, you know, these organisations that are, are, are murky, shady about who's involved, we've got gang associations and we've got gang members there, you know, peddling drugs and, and uh, in possession of firearms, they've got to go. And it, it just amazes me that we highlighted this with the Corrections Minister, um, Calvin Davis, uh, a couple of months ago around the Caracas Street address, which he'd attended there himself with Willie Jackson. Um, and, and I can almost guarantee you that they've done nothing to actually be proactive to ensure that these bail rehabilitation centres are actually... Uh, uh, providing the services that taxpayers would expect and that not, not actually making, uh, they're not transferring more risk into the communities that they're actually located in. So Kelvin Davis and Willie Jackson had actually visited one of the centres that was raided, what, yesterday? Yeah, um, the Ahika Trust, um, they've definitely visited a, I don't know whether it was a graduation ceremony or exactly what the circumstances of it were, um, but they have visited that trust. Um, and so they say they've got no formal relationship with it. Well, you know, they've got to do a bit better than that. They've got to be more transparent. They've got to come out and actually reassure the taxpayers that there isn't taxpayers' funds going through there. And the second thing they have to do is, you know, it's a complete and utter indictment on this soft-on-crime government that they're allowing gang members to be bailed to facilities that where they're just carrying on with their criminal enterprise. Mm. Well, but... Um I would have thought there's also a clear conflict of interest. Uh, in both of these cases, the founders of them admit that their family are gang members. Um, I'm well, sorry, how well, much more conflict so. of interest do you need? Absolutely, and I'm sorry, but there's there's other very good organisations out there providing services that don't have um, those types of conflicts and should be getting more support rather than setting up uh, organisations like this and there's just no excuse. I mean, you know, the, the, the other insidious side of this, Michael, is that there may be some genuine people that have applied to do go through a program that have been put into a facility where they've got patched gang members around them with firearms and drugs. Um, so it's a yeah, failure. Yeah, it's just, yeah. about, just about every way you look at it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, listen, I, you know and I know that if you've joined the Headhunters gang and there's three of you and there are senior members of the Headhunters gang, they're not going to be leaving the Headhunters gang. So the idea that their mother would then set up a facility that offers $19,000 worth of so-called rehabilitation for a 12-week period, mate, that sticks to high heavens. No, you're on to it, and I think this is one of the the wider questions, is that is this just a facility that they're laundering money through? Yeah. yeah. Um, So, no, no, you're 100% right. Now, I guess um, you'll be using parliamentary questions and other uh, and investigative techniques yep. to find out now whether this is just the tip of the iceberg, I take it. Absolutely, yeah. And we've had, look, we've had plenty of written questions and OIA requests um, to try and get to the bottom of it and try and figure out just how widespread the problem is. Um, and that was the other thing. The Chief Ombudsman a couple of weeks ago uh, came out with a scathing report uh, related to how this government responds to OIAs and departments in general. Are you finding it harder to extract information through that process? Very hard. I've got a request that's um, been sitting with the police minister now um, that that is well overdue that we've had to go to the Speaker of the House to try and get some assistance and get that information released. Bearing in mind, Michael, that 
this was meant to be the most transparent government the country was ever going to see. Um, they've been quite the opposite. Well, you've also got one single source of truth as well, so perhaps if you went to that person, <laughs> yeah. you might be able to get it. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, you have a very good weekend, Mark. Thank you for joining us this morning. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Okay, good on you. Ta. Um, that was Mark Mitchell, the National Party spokesman for police. But as you would have heard, also for Whangapura. So he's the MP there. <laughs> you've, you've listened to that. All the information and the facts that you've just, you would have came out in that interview. What do you think? Um, it's as dodgy as buggery, isn't it? Uh, and it's not just dodgy, but you and you know, you know, through just that one conversation and the information that was as a part of that conversation, you know, listening to that exactly what's happening, don't you? So, how come the government does? Int or do they? <laughs> 